really getting into the Christmas spirit in November. If I give you one recommendation from this vlog. <laughs> Honestly, my car is my wardrobe. Yo! Welcome back to another vlog. I sound like a corpse. <laughs> I had a wedding over the weekend, one of my best friend's weddings, and I was the bridesmaid, one of the bridesmaids, and we had a great time. My voice is gone from singing. Let me check back when my voice is a little bit better. Is it getting better? Can you hear me? Hello. <laughs> oh my God, I'll check back in when my voice is back. I'll check back in. I'll check. <laughs> We'll talk later. Well, hello, I am back. You can actually hear me. It is the next day and when I tell you, I think I slept for about 11 hours straight, like the dead, and it was very much needed. Still a little bit raspy today, but I knew that my voice would come back in like a day, it always does. Definitely was singing my little heart out. Gosh, we had so much fun, it was brilliant. I think I explained a little bit yesterday, but honestly, you can't really hear me. It was an Irish Scottish wedding. The groom was Scottish, and actually I think they were more Scottish at it even than Irish, and it was just great crack. I always think weddings that have like two different cultures are just brilliant because it's kind of like a, a mesh of the two, and I feel like both sides tries to kind of like represent and bring something to, to the table. So we were doing like Kaylee dancing. I remember a couple of things from back in the Guelph talk to myself and Katie and we were doing like Kaylee dancing and then they got up and they started doing this dance. I, I think it's called the slosh. The slosh. It was oh, so funny. Such crack, like brilliant. I wasn't even like that, like hungover. Like I definitely was a bit hungover, but um, it was more so just my voice from like belting out the, the tunes. So it was, it was great. But I'm actually about to hit the road because I'm going in to a really fun evening event. It is for like a gin distillery and I think they're doing like a gin cocktail class or kind of tasting. I'm not sure exactly, but I'm going to go with my friend Claire, aka Clissair. Um, So we're going to meet and have a little bit of food beforehand and then go in. So I don't want to be late. I'm going to jump on the bus and head in. I will see you when we're there. Still kind of sound a bit husky, but like fine to like be around people. Like I don't sound that bad. So I think we're good. There she is. There she is now. Oh my God, I sound like I'm going through puberty. So we're here at the Pierce Lines Distillery and we're gonna do a little tour and I think we're gonna make our own gin, which is amazing. It actually looks really, really beautiful. It's gorgeous. You might see, oh, they only look like they're about four foot tall. Actually, eight to nine foot. A lot of people All the people have built up over how, time. How many people did you say? Are there 100,000. Are you oh, having a laugh? Have, we have records. There's probably more than that, but we have records for 100,000. So it goes back to the 11th century. Oh my God. Yes. So we have people that were involved in the Easter Rising. We also have members of the Powers Whiskey family buried here. Wow. We also have members of the Rainsford uh, family buried here. And they're particularly important because they were the people that sold the least Arthur Guinness. And a lot of people don't know that in order to, order to make a whiskey, you need to create a really kind of sour beer. And that's what happens here first thing in the morning. So anytime between 7 to 12 o'clock that day, we get some lovely beers coming on here. Like, basically. It's all, 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 it's
it's not quite ready yet, but you can get an idea of the flavors, even though it will be a little bit more potent. I did say we were going for spice. Yes. Here's the gin, baby. Okay. I'm kind of scared. finished. So you were saying that mine was coming off a little bit too strong and we needed to add some water. Just calm it down. Okay, which honestly makes a lot of sense if I was making a gin. And it would turn out to be stronger. Absolutely. Oh, it looks so realistic. It looks like real gin. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to do my labels. Thank you so much though. promised I said that I would sit down and give you a little bit of an overview of some of my Samsung products because I've been getting a couple of questions about them recently I know we were getting to that time of the year people are thinking about gifting maybe investing in a new device or phone um, or some new wearables so I wanted to give you my experience with them I've been doing a lot of really really fun projects with them but I've also gotten the chance to really test and use some of their wearables and of course one of their devices over the past few months and need Needless to say, I'm very, very impressed. So I'm going to start by showing you the Z Flip 3. You've probably heard about this already because it is such an exciting update to the market of smartphones. And for me personally, I feel like smartphones are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Phones do not fit in people's pockets anymore. Whereas the Z Flip 3, boom. It is so compact, it's so, so handy. It feels very sturdy. It doesn't feel flimsy at all. And the screen itself is actually made of the Gorilla Glass. It's really, really strong. If I rest it on a surface, like let's say if I wanna take a selfie, if I wanna take an outfit video, I basically just pop my phone down on a surface and I can essentially take my photos, videos. Having your own little built-in tripod is extremely handy. You can use all these features down here. And this also works when you're using the phone in general. You can do like a dual screen mode, but it is an incredibly powerful phone as well. Like the camera is fantastic. The battery life is incredible. It's water resistant. Okay, so let's move on. I'm gonna talk about my watch next. So this is the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4, and it is one of their newer smartwatches, and it is so incredible the capabilities that this watch has like it is amazing what it can do so not only is it a great activity tracker obviously it does your steps and your calories and all that kind of stuff but how it tracks your sleep is so so interesting and this is something that like I feel like I'm just killed talking about sleep quality all the time but I just feel like it's so so important you can swipe through and choose from all of these different activities so whether you're walking running playing tennis like swimming you can select it from this and it even has some built-in in like breathing exercises and like guided kind of meditation breathing sessions as well. It really just has so many different features and it has up to 40 hours battery life, which is incredible. And I think it's 30 minutes charging will give you another 10 hours of battery because it charges so, so quickly, which I think is super, super handy. Okay, so the last thing that I'm gonna to talk to you about is another wearable and it is the Buds 2 from Samsung. And look, they're so cute. The little purple color is adorable. You may have seen a reels that I did on these recently, but they are like my go-to on my morning walks. Um, when I'm out with Remy and we just have our lovely walks in the morning, I'm always listening to like music or podcasts or just like switching off and it's like, the perfect way to start my day. There's a feature about these that I think is particularly cool that I have not yet seen in any other like headphones that I've had before. And it's their active noise cancellation. If there is a lot of background noise, like unwanted noise, 
I can actually hear a siren right now. Can you hear that? So you access the noise cancellation via the app, the wearable app on the phone, and you can basically turn it off and on. And I can hear it in my ears now. And it's really handy to toggle. So if you were somewhere where you needed to be paying attention, you know, if there was traffic or whatever, you can easily turn it off and on. So it's always like very, very safe. So yeah, that is just a general kind of look at my Samsung products, my wearables and how I'm finding them. As I said, I've been getting some questions on how I've been getting on and I just wanted to give you a little bit of an overview. But if you have any other questions about them, please just let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to answer any of them. So if there's anything else that I didn't touch on that you wanna know, just let me know in the comments. Oh, hi. So I'm in the car and I'm on my way into town for a hair appointment. I got my lashes and my brows laminated. I go to Inga at Permanent Beauty and she's great. She's super lovely and like really affordable as well. I'm on my way to get my hair done. As I said, I'm literally repeating myself because I'm focusing on the road as I should be. I'm going to get my fringe retrimmed. It needs a good trim. Then I'm going to Kildare Village because they're turning on the Christmas lights, which is so exciting. I just feel like I'm really getting into the Christmas spirit in November but how and ever I feel like everybody's doing that this year oh yeah the distillery event the Pierce Lines um, cocktail making was so much fun I feel like my footage was so chaotic but it was great crack and myself and Claire had a ball I love doing stuff like that and I just love that it's like it's really the kickoff of silly season and it just gets really really busy this time of the year so like I'm definitely feeling overwhelmed um, like happy, grateful, so happy to be busy, but it's around this time of the year that I do get a little bit overwhelmed because there's just a lot going on. And I feel like I fall behind on like my emails and like content and things. And there's just always a million things that I'm trying to get done. I also realized I haven't given you any house updates in this vlog. So last we spoke, basically the fixer upper that we quite liked, I think I was really romanticizing it. And like a lot of the comments in that video were people being like, Kira, be really careful of like serious fixer uppers because like they can be money pits. And I totally understand that. And I think that like my like romantic kind of daydreamer head is like, oh my God, it's gonna be amazing. But actually we would have been moving into like a building site. So I, I think it really, really was for the best that that didn't work out. The other house that we are really interested in, we're bidding on and we haven't heard anything in a couple of days. We're being like really hopeful, but also not trying to get my hopes up too much because obviously this is the way that it goes. We just really hope it works out. We really like this house and it's in the area that we love. Oh, I'm in the wrong lane. So I'm going into this one. <laughs> Feels very vulnerable to like talk to you about being outbid and being disappointed and blah, blah, blah. But I think it's important because it's such a normal thing. Like, unless you are a bazillionaire, which if you are, fucking well done. It's just, it's just pretty crazy right now. And obviously like I'm looking in, in Dublin, you know, if I was looking in other parts of the country, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be as expensive. And also we really don't want to overpay. So like, we're trying to be really strict on budgets because we're like, no, this house is not worth this crazy price or whatever. So we're trying to be really, really strict. Maybe in six months of being outbid, we might be like, no, we actually are gonna have to like match these crazy prices. But like, I don't want to because it's 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 really indicative of the, that, that, those like crisis prices. I wanna get a house that if we need to move on in, in, in however, five, 10 years, I don't know, that like we're not gonna be trapped in this thing that we've paid way too much for. Like I'd rather get something that needs a bit of love. You know, like someone said in the comments and it's so true. They said, get the worst house in the best area. And I'm like, yeah. I, I I see what you're saying because every house can be made beautiful and every house can be made a home but we just don't want to spend more than we realistically think that those houses are worth. Anyway, I'm rambling away here, so I'm going to sign off. Uh, you're so tilted. I'm so sorry. This is like a chronic angle, but I'm not touching the camera because I'm driving. I'll check back when I'm in the salon and maybe we'll have a bit of a chat about what I'm getting done. Because I do get questions about my fringe and how it all works. And Catherine in Queen is the woman for that. And then I'll bring you to Gildare Village. Okay, bye.
I'm back in my car. I just got my hair cut. There's loads of um, product in it, so to like brush it a little bit. But I love my fringe. Catherine always does my cut. She's amazing. She's like the fringe queen. But I'm gonna have lunch in my car and then I need to hit the road because I'm going to Kildare Village. As I said, we're turning on the lights. I'm not turning on the lights. I'm going to cover the lights being turned on, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna have a car lunch, which I've had many a time and then I'm gonna hit the road. Can you see me? It's very dark. I'm at Kildare Village. I've just touched up my makeup. It's funny how when you take an inch off your hair, it can actually seem longer because it just feels healthier, but I'm wearing a little beret because it kind of looks like rain. It's like mildly drizzling and I brought like multiple hats. Honestly, my car is my wardrobe, especially during busy times with work. Like in here I have coats, makeup, hats, spare coats, you name it. It's just so important for work. I brought my faux fur. I haven't worn this since last year. This is like, it's so real looking. It's obviously fake. It's from Topshop a few years ago. I had seen it, was obsessed with it. It's like a real vintage style, but I couldn't find it anywhere and I found it on eBay and I got it for like a really good price and it was in my size as well. I got a size 10. I always think with faux fur like size up a bit, I think it should always look like oversized, but I wasn't gonna wear it because it was gonna be really wet, but now it's not too wet. So I'm gonna chance this and this. I'm also having, I wouldn't say it's an emergency Coke Zero, but like getting a bit of a zhuzh of energy. And I'm gonna look over the brief again, just to make sure I'm hitting everything. There's some shops that I particularly wanna highlight and the brief is just like a general kind of guideline and stuff like that. But yeah, so I'm very excited. shop I usually do this on like a Monday morning but this week has just been a bit hectic but I got all the bits there there we go and in last week's vlog I got someone asking me about how to make that like tomato thing that I was making it's basically like the easiest pasta recipe in the world so I'm gonna unpack and I'll really quickly show you how I make it because it's like brainlessly easy which is why I love it Okay, so this is everything you need. It is so easy. It's um, called like feta pasta or like the TikTok feta pasta. Um, it went super viral earlier in the year. So you pop your feta in the dish, any feta, it really doesn't matter. And then you just throw in a rake of cherry tomatoes. Now I, I'm doing this one-handed, so I'm gonna go and remove the little stalks, but just for reference, I'm also gonna use these slightly bigger cherry tomatoes. I might half these. Um, you want to really stuff it so there's loads of cherry tomatoes. I'm also going to go in with some mushrooms just because I love mushrooms and I also tend to chop up one or two of these garlic bulbs and put them in as well because I love garlic. Then what you do is you absolutely drown it in some olive oil, uh, like a lot of olive oil and then you use some mixed herbs and then you also go in with a lot of pepper and like this is some like garlic seasoning or whatever kind of like herbs and things that you want and then you boil up your pasta water with loads of salt and then when it's cooked you basically just take a fork and kind of mash it all together and then you mix the pasta in with it and it's so tasty and it tastes really kind of cheesy and like indulgent but feta isn't like the most calorific or most heavy cheese out there so it's like a really nice way of using it in a pasta dish but I go in with a container of fresh pesto on top of that and it is so good. So I'm just gonna make that for myself and Yosef this evening. I make this maybe once every week or two at least, and it's just like so foolproof. I'll link to like a TikTok or whatever in the description that like probably illustrates it a bit better, but like so easy.
so many tomatoes in this. So that's what it looks like and I'm gonna chuck it in the oven now for like 25 minutes and when it comes out it's gonna be stunning and then I'll cook the pasta in the meantime. Sunday I'm just giving my face a good wash and um, this little silicone thing can you see those little ridges or spikes or whatever this is like the handiest little skin tool and they're so cheap and cheerful I'm pretty sure you can get them in like pennies or on Amazon or like loads of places and you just pop your fingers in it like this and you can like really scrub your face so whatever product you're using it like really gets in and it's amazing for your pores it's one of my favorite things i actually have one hanging in the shower so i use it on my like chest and my back and the tops of my arms when i'm in the shower i have like a salicylic cleanser from CeraVe that i use in the shower and then i have my salicylic that i wash my face with but uh today is sunday so it's like a little bit more of a self-care day obviously i wash my face every day but i don't think to film it um so i'm just going to show you what i'm currently using so this is Caudalie. It is their Vino Pure Salicylic Serum. I am a big fan of salicylic acid. I use it in my routine a lot. I tend to not have that many spots, but I think I'm on the oilier side, so I have to like preempt that. And salicylic, like my skin loves it. And this is so good. It's actually recent enough. You only need like not even a full pump, like literally that much. Do you see that? The way that this product spreads, it's like it's so generous. You really don't need that much. A little goes a long way. And it gives that really nice, mild, like tingle. It just really feels like it's doing something and it soaks in straight away. Especially this time of the year, I feel like with heavier moisturizers, we're wearing a lot more makeup, like, you know, going out and stuff like that. Having something that like keeps your skin happy and blemish free, like that's a really, really good one. Um, sometimes I go in with a second serum. I have another Caudalie one that I'm really liking. This is their Radiant Serum. I don't think it's as active as the other one, but it's really, really nice. I can switch between serums, but that salicylic one I've been using a lot. Oh my God, this feels so nice. It just soaks in so quickly. But the product that I just, I recommend everybody gets, I just keep singing its praises, is this. I don't know if you've seen this before. It's the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Bam B5. I find sometimes La Roche products are like, they're named really clinically. So it's really hard to understand what they are, like what Cicaplast is, but this, Feckin' cream is unbelievable. The best way I can explain it is it's like pseudocreme, but better. If you have any kind of skin irritation, um, if you've had like a burn, any kind of like irritated skin, whether maybe you've used too much retinol, if you've irritation from that, from the winter, whatever it is, this is incredible. It's so cheap and cheerful. You can get a smaller tube for like under a tenner. This tube is maybe 12 euro. It's like this kind of thick cream. Usually something like this would make my skin break out, but when I tell you my skin 
adores this. I don't know how it's so rich and hydrating, but doesn't give me spots. I can't understand it. You can even use it as a primer. Like I've seen TikToks where girls smother their face in this and then do their makeup and like beautiful. But the reason why I've been using this is not just because of winter skin and like I do my daily peer walks and my skin gets battered, but actually I had nearly two weeks of having irritated skin recently. It just got really angry and like I couldn't use any of my normal products because I use quite active products. And this was the only thing that my skin was happy with. And when I tell you I smothered my face in this morning and night. Even at Louise's wedding, my skin was quite irritated and I had this on underneath all my makeup and oh my God, it makes such a difference. So if you have irritated skin or like your skin is suffering in the winter, like please get this, you'll be so happy. I'll link them all in the description. I know sometimes in these vlogs, I don't share much beauty, but I really like sharing with you like the products that I'm really, really loving. Um, and like, if I give you one recommendation from this vlog, the La Roche-Posay Secret Last. It's amazing. Today is going to be a somewhat relaxed day. I feel like it's been a pretty hectic week. It's been so fun. Um, silly season is definitely kicking off and actually next week is going to be wild. I'm filming with Tri Channel twice. We've got a big shoot on Tuesday. It's gonna be very full on. On Wednesday, I have some events in the evening. And then on Friday, it's Lauren's wedding. So exciting. Okay, so I think I'm going to end the vlog here. I feel like it's been somewhat of a chaotic week, um, but super, super fun. Hope you enjoyed. Um, next week's gonna be a lot of fun and I'm going to try and bring you along to all of the madness. Um, but yeah, I'll also give you more updates on the house because I feel like we're going to find out next week what the story is with the house that we've been bidding on. It's kind of gone a little bit quiet. Don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I will keep you updated. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next vlog. Bye.